Good evening. Uh, welcome to my family and uh, all of you as well. On September 11, 2001, I sat in the stairwell on the 25th floor and accepted that I was going to die. I had just walked down 40 flights of stairs, and what prompted that trek was the fact that uh, my coworkers and I were standing in the middle of the floor watching flaming desks and paper hurtling uh, toward our windows. Uh, we stood and watched this in disbelief for a few seconds, and then my boss started yelling, get out, get out, and uh, I followed her. Um, she had been in the 93 bombing. She knew what she was doing. That's what I figured anyway. We get to the stairwell, and um, for me, it was slow going. I had just had uh, foot surgery a few months before that, so I was going down the stairs one step at a time. Um, and at this time, two of my coworkers decided that they were going to protect me. They were going to shield me from uh, the race that was on the left side of me. You see, the stairwells were only made for two people side by side. So the, my one coworker, John, who I knew for many years, he stood behind me and with a loud, booming voice, he yelled, slow people to the right, fast to the left. And believe me, they were fast running down. Um, the other fellow, Greg, I had only just recently uh, met him, um, and the only reason I met him was because he just had a baby, and uh, I had gotten him a gift. So I knew him just very, very short time. So here we are, the three of us, slowly making our way down, one step at a time, and um, all of a sudden there was this loud boom and a shudder. You could feel... Uh, right through your bones, a shudder. And then everything started to sway. And uh, we swayed uh, back and forth and back and forth again uh, several times. And during that time, there was this eerie silence. You just couldn't hear anything. And as my, the sound of my ears started to come back, I realized that there were people that were being thrown over my head and uh, toppling over me and just tumbling down the stairs. Fortunately for me, I was holding on, so uh, I wound up on my butt on the stairs. Um, it was at this time, the, all the screaming and the pandemonium, Greg was already at the bottom of the stairs and... Um, he looks up at me and he says, Dolores, Dolores, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And John's behind me going, cook, cook, we better move. You know, so, I mean, here we is, Greg knows me as Dolores and my buddy knows me as uh, Cookie. Um, and I looked at Greg and I said, look, just, just go without me, just leave. Don't, don't worry about me, I'll, I'll be fine. Um, I don't want you to lose your life uh, because of me. You just had a baby. And he, he kind of stopped and looked up at me, and he, he said, what, you know, my mother's name is Dolores, and if she ever found out that I left you here, she'd kill me. So start moving. <laughs> so, I, you know, it was like a few seconds to, to comprehend this, and I started to think about my own kids, my own family. What were they going to what were they going to say about me at my uh, at my funeral? You know, I'd already had my death in my mind, and um, I knew what they were going to say. They were going to say that she fought to the last minute. She she crawled if she had to, but we know she's going to fight and fight to get out of there. We knew she we we know she did that, and and I started thinking, well. It, you know, what am I? Do I want to make a liar out of my kids? I really don't. And uh, I started thinking about the adversity that had come through within my lifetime. Um, I mean, I had my husband lost his job. We had four kids. I had to get, you know, extra jobs. I delivered newspapers. I, I did alterations on the side. Well, you just do it. Uh, 
we had a fire at our house. We lost everything. Um, I had to scramble around to family and friends to get replacement of stuff. Well, you just kind of shrug it off. You just do it. You do what you got to do. And I start to think, well, maybe I can do what I got to do now. And grabbed hold of the railing, and I pulled my butt up off the stairs, and I just pushed myself to keep moving. And um, it was slow going. I still had my two protectors. And at one step at a time, you can imagine the apprehension. And there was this feeling of uh, frantic anxiety and urgency to get out. You could tell from the people racing past and screaming and still yelling. Um, but we finally made it to the bottom. And uh, at this point, my, uh, my old legs were numb, and I just couldn't go any further. But we made it to the bottom, and John and Greg just, they lifted me up uh, under my arms, and uh, they carried me under um, the building through the smoke and the darkness uh, to the stairwell where we could get out and uh, get to freedom and get out of this place. And uh, we come to the, uh, the end where we had to get out, and it's, oh, no, one more stairs, one more set of stairs. And Greg and John, they, they looked at me and said, well, can you do this? And I turned around and I said, yeah, I can do it. I know, I can, I can do this. And uh, sure enough, I made it up that last flight outside of Borders onto Church Street. Um, the rest of the day, too, was many times I said to myself, I can do it, I can do it. And it took several hours uh, to get home, but once I did, uh, I think my family realized, well, she did it. We knew she'd, we knew she'd get home. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>